Good morning, Community Baptist Church and our online friends. We come today to give worship to God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I'm going to read scripture for you today. It's coming out of Psalms 46, verses 1 through 11. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their strength. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I have just read you Psalms 46 verses 1 through 11. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. In 1346 to 1400s, they had the Black Plague, HIV and AIDS pandemic, 2005 to 212. They had the flu pandemic of 1968. They had the Asian flu of 56 and 58. They had the flu pandemic of 1918. They had the sixth cholera pandemic of 1910 to 1911. And they had the flu pandemic of 1889 to uh, 1890. And many people may be saying, Minister Williams, why are you saying that? I'm saying that because now we got coronavirus. God was there doing the Black Plague. God was there doing HIV. God was there doing the flu pandemic, the Asian flu, all the flu pandemics, cholera, the flu pandemic of 1889. God is able people. This too shall pass. Lift up your hands today in hope and in faith to God that this too shall soon pass. God is in control. God is in control. So have faith and have hope, saints, saints of God. Remain strong in Christ. At this time, we will have our deacons come to do devotion and prayer and read scriptures. Praise to the Almighty God. My name is Deacon Jude, and I will be working with Brother Hardy, Deacon Hardy to bring the devotion. Our scripture is coming from King James, the King James Version, Proverbs, the third chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be help to thy neighbor and marrow to thy bone. Let me say it one more time. It will be help to thy neighbor and marrow to thy bone. May God bless blessing to the reading of the word. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning, just a few of your servants. Lord, we are scattered, but our hearts are on one accord. Lord, we want to hear from you today, and that is what we are reaching out to do. Father, we ask that you just continue to go with us, Father. We know that we are having some challenges, not only in Milwaukee, but we're having challenges in the world. But Father, we know that you gave us a promise that no matter what comes, you will always be with us. Amen. And Father, today we are counting on that. Yes. Father, we ask you to go with those who have suffered from this virus that has taken hold of the world. Lord, for those who have lost loved ones, we ask that you lift their hearts up, Father. 
Lord, we ask you to go with the bereaved families today, Father. Lord, we ask that you have mercy. Lord, we ask that you just touch those who are still with us. And Lord, let them heed to the advice of our leaders that we practice social distancing, Father, so that we won't continue to spread this among us, Father. Let us be humble. Let us be obedient to your word. And let us be obedient to guidance and supervision. Father, we know that you have been with us through so many times, Father. Lord, we may be going through a valley, but one thing about valley experiences, Father, you said that weeping may endure for a night. We don't know how long this night is going to be, but Father, we know that joy comes in the morning. Have mercy now, Father. Lord, that we ask you to just continue to go with us, Lord. And Lord, let the world know that COVID-19 shall not, will not have the last word. All of our help comes from you, Father. And today we are trusting in you that you will lead us through. We uh, give these and blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.
church say amen. amen. Brother Jones, we needed that word and song to remind us of God's blessed assurance. At this time, I believe the church universal needs to lean on God's blessed assurance because bad things never happen at a good time. This is one of the most sacred times in the life of the church universal, a time of Lent in preparation for Resurrection Sunday for Easter. And at this time, the church finds itself fragmented, fragmented and dispersed as we should be, but it has placed a particular burden and anxiety on the church because God's people have been encouraged not to fail to assemble themselves together. Oh, but we thank God for technology that will allow us to be together. If not actually, we can be together virtually. And it looks like we will have triumphal entry or Palm Sunday virtually. Looks like we'll have Easter virtually because we must abide by the COVID-19 guidelines that have been established by our government and by our health professionals. So community, I want to encourage you to do all that you can to be safe and to abide by the guidelines of safer at home. We know that there are many in our community who have not been abiding by that guideline. They're still out playing basketball, hanging out uh, as if it's business as usual, and it's affecting the African-American community. I don't know if you've watched the news lately, but even on yesterday, Governor Evers made a statement that's quite telling. He said that the African-American community under this coronavirus is a crisis within a crisis, and we must stem the tide by abiding by those guidelines. So people of God, encourage your friends, your family, your neighbors to stay safe at home and to abide by those guidelines because we want to come together again when God says so as a safer and healthier body in Christ. Amen? Amen. So just uh, uh, one update, uh, continue to look for Community Baptist Church on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, Minister Tim and Minister Charlotte have been doing uh, the Lenten Bible study series so we can still have uh, uh, that time of study and reflection and do continue to read your Lenten reflections. We must pray for one another 
and we must be in contact with one another. I commend the deacons for calling the membership because I've talked with many of them myself. They mentioned that the deacons have called, the associate ministers have, and I myself have been calling uh, our membership. So let's stay in touch with one another. Before there was social media, there was the telephone. So let's continue to use that to our advantage. So until God calls us back together as one unified body in Christ uh, in a face-to-face -face format, let's stay Community Baptist strong. Amen. God bless you. Scripture today is coming from Romans 8.28. I'm reading from the NIV, and it reads as thus. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. Thus ends the reading of God's word. It is already blessed. And after we receive a song from our choir, the next voice you will hear is the Reverend Dr. Demetrius K. Williams of Community Baptist Church of Greater Milwaukee. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other that reaches to me. You are my strength. Strength like no other, strength like no other that reaches to me. In the fullness of your grace and in the power. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Even now, he's still the 
Savior, Savior, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. Oh, you're the Savior, Savior, Savior. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I recognize him to be the healer, healer, healer. All over the land and country. Healer, healer, healer. Oh, you're the healer, healer, healer. Even now I call you Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Power in that name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Deliverance in his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Amen. Shall we pray? Gracious and eternal God, your people come before you today, offering thanks and praise because your word tells us that in all things we are to give thanks. And we thank you, Lord, that you have preserved us thus far along our journey. And we know that you will guide us on to the end. So we're asking as we prepare to hear your word that you would open up our hearts and open up our minds so that me, we may receive what the Spirit is saying to the church today. We ask this blessing in the mighty name of Jesus and for his sake we pray, amen and amen. The scripture has already been read, but I don't mind reading it again or even quoting it in your hearing because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Paul in Romans 8 and 28 tells the Roman community to whom he's writing, for we know that God works out all things for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to God's purpose. Just for a few fleeting moments, I'd like to share with you from the subject, it's all good. The world has been thrown off of its regularly scheduled programming. A tiny microscopic organism had, has altered the course of human affairs. Not war, <laughs> but a tiny microscopic organism has thrown the world's economy and social relations into array. And rightfully so, the world is wondering what's going on and what's going to happen in our immediate future. It has affected families who depend on regularly scheduled pay. Yeah. Amen. I mentioned last week, it's nice to know that every Friday or every first of the month that you can go to your bank and trust and know that you have funds sufficient for taking care of your family business. Yeah. Oh, but COVID-19 has caused families to be concerned about their financial situation. Yeah. It has placed a strain on our health organizations. And governors and, 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 and mayors are calling out to the federal government to send aid. And they are rightfully concerned about their communities. But I want you to know that uh, it, it, it's, it's all good. 
even when I say that, I say it with a degree of trepidation because I can just hear my religious critics saying, how can you say it's all good when my family member is sick with the coronavirus? How can you say it's all good when thousands of people have died from this virus? How can you say it's all good when doctors and nurses are concerned about their own health as they minister to the needs of others? Well, I have to tell you that when you have the consciousness that Paul talks about here, even in the face of circumstances that do not bear witness to your confession, you have to stand on the reality that God's perspective is much higher and broader and deeper than human perspective. Yet the world economy has been thrown off, but can I tell you God's economy is working right on time. God says in his word, through the apostle Paul, he says, for we know. Well, what is Paul saying there? Paul is saying in this text, as he said earlier in Romans 8, verse 5, he says, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. Those who live according to the spirit set their minds on things of the spirit. So Paul is saying that there are different ways of knowing in the world. When you have not set your mind on things of the spirit, situations like this can bring fear and anxiety because you're worrying about your future. But when you set your minds on things of the spirit, you know that God has worked it out in the past. God is working it out now, and God can work it out in the future. It's a matter of perspective, for we know <laughs> that God is working out all things for good. I'd like to just share a, a personal reflection of this regard about what we know about knowing. I never knew that the churches across the world would have to use social media to communicate with its people. As a matter of fact, I was a social media hater. I was not on Facebook. I was not on Twitter. I did not use any of the social media formats because, in my opinion, there were too many haters out there. Amen. I didn't want to be concerned about likes and dislikes and folks commenting on posts. So I avoided social media like the plague. Yeah. And part of that might be my understanding of Paul's own experience in the ancient world. I don't know if any of you read 2 Corinthians chapter, two, chapter 10, verse 2. In 2 Corinthians 10 and 2, the Corinthian community sized up Paul and his media presence. This is what they said about Paul. His letters are weighty and strong, but his bodily presence is weak and contemptible. Hold on, hold on, hold on. See, Paul's media presence was powerful and strong, but his physical presence, they said, Paul, you don't measure up to your media persona. And that was one of my concerns. I, I feel comfortable face to face, but I was a little uncomfortable about media presence because folk can be critical, and when they can be critical over and over again, keep viewing, keep, yeah, that, that caused me concern, but I just want you to know it's all good now, yeah. amen, it's all good because necessity has been forced upon me, and God has told me, don't worry about what folk have to say, just do what I tell you to do, and I will make your enemies your footstool. Uh, can I give you a contemporary example of that? When I was in seminary, I read uh, uh, Black Theology and Black Power by the now late but great James Hal Cohn. James Cohn is the father of Black Theology, and in 1969, after the riots and the death of Martin, he was angry. 
So for the first time, he challenged established theology that if you don't take up the concern of the poor and the downtrodden, then you have an empty theology. So James Cone challenged the entire theological establishment and that little red book, scholars began to call him uh, uh, the angry theologian. When I read James Cone's book, I imagined a big, burly, strong John Henry kind of brother because the, the, his, his, his media persona represented the most defiant and the most courageous in the African-American community to speak truth to power. Oh, but when I got a chance to finally hear James Cone, it was a tall, skinny brother with a big afro. And when he approached the mic, he said, hello, my name is James Cole. I understood what the ancients felt about Paul. Your, your media presence was strong and powerful, but your physical presence, this is no hating against James Cone, God rest his soul. It's just to bear out the reality that sometimes media presence can present one persona and face-to-face -face presence can present another. But like I said already, I'm not worried about it because it's all good now. Because God has a way, even when we're not planning for it, of working things out ahead of time. Who would have thought several years ago that human beings would find a way to communicate with video and, and with conversation that stuff from the Star Trek days? Oh, you remember Star Trek when they would be on a little telecomputer talking to one another? Pretty soon, we better look out. We'll be able to say, beam me up, Scotty. I'm looking forward to that because I'm tired of traveling, taking hours to get to my destination. Just beam me up, Scotty. But Paul says that there are ways of knowing that are different from the world's ways of knowing. God's ways of knowing, one scholar, Andre Reznor, in his book, Preacher and Cross, said that with the advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have two ways of knowing now. The worldly ways is kata sarka, according to the flesh. That doesn't mean the physical flesh, but the way human beings view the world and the world system works. And then he says there's another way of knowing, which is kata stauron. That is through the cross. The cross brought in a new reality into the human realm that you can see trouble and know that trouble don't last always. Countastaron assures the Christian community that it looked like Jesus was dying like a weakling. Paul even says that. He died looking weak, but he lives by the power of God. So what Countastaron reminds us is that you don't look at things the way they are to determine your, the foundation of your reality. Right. You know that things are going to work out regardless of how bad they look because you know that God is already working it out. Can I tell you something? If you don't mind, can, I hope no one feels offended. I just want to use a concept from our East Asian uh, uh, traditions uh, of Taoism. And many of us are familiar with the yin-yang symbol, that in, in the dark symbol with a little bit of light, the light symbol with a little bit of dark. That means that even during bad times, when it's dark, there's still some light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes when we think we're at our worst moment, we're really at our best moment because the, the, the bad things can help you to do better. Can I tell you, Paul... Started out looking good. This is the, the light yin with a little bit of little dark in there. Paul started out looking good, didn't he? He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He said, I was born a, a, a Jew from Jews, a, a Hebrew from Hebrews. He had every advantage that a Jewish child could have. He was circumcised on the eighth day. Had a good Greco-Roman education. Looked like everything was going good. Paul was so dedicated and determined, he said, I excelled all my peers in my zeal for the tradition of my fathers. Everything looked good. He was raised a good Jewish boy. 
Oh, but one day he began to persecute the church of God because the law had taught him that in order to have right relationship with God, that you had to keep the deeds and the righteousness of the law. He said the law was good. And so he persecuted those Christians because they were preaching a crucified Messiah. And he knew that in Deuteronomy 21, uh, 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 31, that it says, cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree. So he said, I got the law to back me up. Y'all must be crazy out there preaching this Jesus. Oh, but one day when Paul was riding high uh, at the height of his power, God said, hold on now. What you thought was good, I've transformed it now. Knocked him off of his horse and told him, ah, you do have a zeal, but it's not according to knowledge. Didn't you read Jeremiah 31, 31 when I said I will bring a new covenant? That they would not have hearts of stone, but hearts of flesh. Paul wasn't aware of that new covenant coming, but God had to knock him down. He thought he was doing good, but then there was a, a, a clause in that statement. And then you have the situation of Joseph. Joseph, he started off good too, didn't he? Mom and daddy treating him like the chosen child. Daddy made him a coat of many colors. And then God began to give him visions about his future. And sometimes when you're young, you know, you get a little swole in the chest. You don't know how to manage your emotions, to manage your, your, you know, what God has put in you. And so uh, he began to tell his family, you know, I have visions and dreams. You know, mom and dad, y'all were the moon and I was son. Y'all bowed down to me, brothers. You were she. You know the story. And then, then, then the next thing you know, after starting off well, his brother said, we're going to deal with this rascal. They sold him into slavery. Can I tell you things look bad? But when things look bad, can I assure you that God is working it out for your good? The thing I love about Joseph is that even when he was in prison at, at, uh, uh, after leaving Potiphar's house, he still did the right thing. And can I tell you, we need to do the right thing now. Whether he was in prison or he was in Potiphar's house, he continued to live and to, to stand up for what was right. He did the right thing so that when opportunity presented itself, God was able to reveal how things were working themselves out for good. So that years later, after he brought his family together, he could say, you know, when he talked to his brothers, you may have meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. So what I want us to do today is just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because no matter how bad things look, keep on trusting and keep on believing in God that God will work it out. But you got to do your part. You got to do what is right so that when the change comes, you'll be ready to participate in that change. Ain't God good today? Isn't it good to know that all things is working out for your good? It's good to know that we can trust God in times of sickness, in times of distress, in times of, of trouble. We can trust in the Lord. As we close today, I want to close with that hymn that is the standard in the church. I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Gracious God, we thank you for your word which reminds us that even when we can't see it, that you are working everything out for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to your purpose. We thank you now for this opportunity 
of worship. And we give your name all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.